Brian, I discovered recently that I've taken a liking to fountain pen designs that don't have a clip. Does Goulet carry any clipless pens and what are your recommendations? Um, we do carry some clipless pens. The thing I will say about clipless pens is they're not super common. Um, there's only a handful of them that are out there. You know, pen uh, clips, of course, it, excuse me, it serves an aesthetic function, but at the same time, it serves really two other functions. One of which is to, well, clip it onto your pocket or shirt or notebook or whatever. Um, so it serves a functional purpose there. And it also acts as a roll stop. So if you have a pen, it's on the desk. If you have a very expensive pen, it can be a roll stop and keep it from falling off the desk especially when it's open, because you know that sucker is going nib down, right? We talked about that last week. Um, but anyway, so those are the two functional things it has. When you have a pen that is clipless, well, then you can get into a situation where the pen can just roll off the desk and not necessarily ideal for that to happen. So um, I'll show you the clipless designs that I have at Goulet um, and uh, just talk through them a little bit in terms of uh, kind of what I like about them and what I don't. In general, though, I don't use a whole ton of clipless pens. That's just that's just me. Um, but uh, one of the first ones is the Kaweco Sport. Um, the nice thing about this one, it is a clipless design, but you can get a clip to put on it if you really want one. Um, but it has a uh, hexagonal design here. Uh, no, sorry, octagonal design. The eight-sided um, on the cap. So it's, it kind of acts as its own roll stop, which is kind of nice because you don't have the obtrusive clip, but at the same time, it's not necessarily going to roll off your desk. Lots of different color options. Of course, this is the ice version, but you can get the clear, you can get a bunch of different things. Quake has got a lot of different options and it's relatively affordable too. So this is not a bad one and I do like converting it to an eyedropper uh, sometimes. Though, you know, it can burp a little bit and stuff like that. It's not perfect, but um, it's definitely worth consideration. Another one, if this jumps way up in price, but the Quaco Lilliput, this tiny little thing. Uh, we do have clips for Lilliput now if you want to add one on there, um, but tiny little pen, cartridge only. Um, this one is, uh, this one will definitely roll just like straight up off your desk because there's no real roll stop of any kind uh, built into it. So you have to kind of watch out for that. But it's also a tiny little pen, so I don't know, I don't have as big of an issue with this. Um, but uh, my, this is more of a pocket pen for me, so I just kind of throw it in my pocket and let it roll around. Though I did accidentally put this through the washing machine because I put it in my pocket and it's so small, I didn't notice it when I went to, anyway. So it's been through the wash. It did kind of, you know, uh, takes some of the vibrancy out of my, my finish when I put it through the washing machine and the dryer. God, it ruined a pair of Rachel's pajama pants too. She doesn't let me forget it. Anyway, uh, next one that I have is the Pilot Kakuno. Um, this one is also uh, faceted. So this one is uh, hexagonal, six sides. Um, and it has just a tiny little roll stop right here as well, as if the hex, you know, just to kind of be extra assurance there. It has a little roll stop there. Um, and this one is on the cap and the body. So even if you like to use it unposted, it'll still roll a little bit, but it won't roll all day long. So it'll at least help somewhat. And of course it has a smiley face nib on it too. So not sure if this pen is exactly in your, in your wheelhouse, but um, I do like this. And the nibs can swap onto the Metropolitan as well, which is kind of cool. Another one, you know, this one, the Pilot Parallel, Probably not a carry around pen for you. It's fairly niche in its purpose, you know, because it starts at one and a half millimeter and goes up from there as a stub italic kind of thing. Um, but uh, I thought I would mention it just because it doesn't actually have a clip technically. It's got more of an elaborate roll stop, but uh, you know, there it is. So um, it won't roll off the desk as well, um, but it's kind of built into the design of the pen. So not sure if this fits into your clipless category, but I thought it was worthy of a mention. Um, another one is the Pilot, or sorry, the Platinum Carbon Desk Pen. Um, so it's got this uh, like a very, you know, minimally functional cap. Um, it has a desk base too that you can get along with it. So it's like kind of like the bank teller style thing. Um, the nicest thing about this pen is a really, really fine, extra fine nib. So that's really cool, and it's pretty cheap. It's like twelve fifty. But um, you know, it has you know a functional cap, but it has um, facets on it. How many is this one? six. Um, but this one will kind of keep from rolling off your desk as well. So you got some options here. Um, two other pens that I have that are kind of worth an honorable mention. One is a Stipula Passaporto, which um, this is the old version. I'm still waiting to get the new version. Um, but uh, the, the little leaf logo, the Stipula logo there is um, the only thing that acts as a roll stop. So that's one thing to take in consideration. It's eyedropper only. But it's a cute little pen. So we'll have that out here in the next couple of weeks, I think. I don't have an exact date on it. 
The other one that I have, and this one is, is requires a little bit of a hack, but this is a tactile turn gist. Uh, and the only reason I mention this is because um, if you uh, are able to remove, you know, it's just friction fit on here. Um, if you're able to remove the little top, then you can pull the clip off. And yes, you end up with a little bit of space at the top, but you can kind of turn the pen easily into a um, clipless. So that's kind of cool. And you can kind of do this on a bunch of other pens. Like technically you can do this on Edison pens. They're really ratcheted on there pretty good, so it's kind of tough to get off, but you can you can technically do that. Whenever you do that, you're gonna end up with a little slit there that's uh, where the clip shows through. It's kind of unavoidable, um, but it's just something to consider if you really wanted to, to hack it up and do it that way, uh, you totally can. So um, of all the ones that I mentioned here, the ones that I prefer the most out of this bunch would be, you know, kind of the original, the Quaco Sport um, or the Pilot Kakuno. I like that. I like the nib on the Kakuno the best, um, and it's pretty affordable as well. The Stipula Passporto, I, I want to say I'm going to like that, but I haven't seen it yet, so I can't really say that very like, but I do like the old one, so I'm curious to see how those turn out. But anyway, those are the clipless pen options I have. There's a bunch of other ones, especially if you're looking to you know, spend a little bit and get into, um, you know, there's a lot of nib meisters that do custom stuff. I know Edison has uh, their model, the Mina, that is a clipless, uh, you know, pen by design, and there's definitely plenty of others that do uh, clipless designs, and you have a lot more options when you get into custom stuff.